This is a short little video about the labor force participation rate and the unemployment rate and how these statistics are calculated and also some important things that need to be kept in mind when considering what these statistics mean. The unemployment rate is a big piece of news every month and people use it as one of the main gauges for what's going on in the economy. And it can be a very useful statistic for measuring the economy, but it's always important to keep in mind what gets counted in the unemployment rate and what exactly uh, can go into changing and affecting the unemployment rate. So this uh, problem is meant to get to look at both how changes in the number of unemployed and changes in the labor force can affect the unemployment rate. So the first thing to keep in mind when we talk about the unemployment rate is that the unemployment rate is a measure of the number of workers who do not have a job compared to the overall labor force. And so when given a population, right, for instance in this uh, problem it's a population of 500, you actually need to subtract out the parts of the population that um, are not interested in having a job. Um, key thing to keep in mind is that when we talk about unemployment, what we're talking about are people who um, want to have a job at the current wage rate. And there's a lot of people in our society who are not interested in a job. And for instance, we can easily factor out right, people under 16, right, people who are students who are not able to work, right, we shouldn't treat them in the statistic for unemployment, so we'll factor them out of uh, the population to get to the labor force. Same thing with retirees, people who have worked their whole lives and are now retired, they're not interested in being in the labor force either. So when we consider our population here, we start off with a population of 500, but we subtract out 270 people to actually get a labor force of 230 people. And so, yeah, as you can see, our labor force is significantly less than the population. And a key statistic that economists uh, track is what's known as labor force participation rate. And that is the number, the size of the labor force relative to the size of the population. And in this case, our labor force is 230, and our population is 500, which gives us a labor force participation rate of 46%. In other words, slightly less than half the people in the society are not working. But that's okay because maybe these people who are working are incredibly productive and they can keep the whole society living at a high standard of living, which allows more children to go to school and also allows retirees to live comfortably. Now, in this uh, situation, what's the unemployment rate in this society? Well, the problem tells us that the number of unemployed people is 18 and our labor force is 230 and so our labor, our calculation on unemployment is to look at the number of unemployed people uh, divided by the labor force and in this case, right, if we do this out, um, sorry, the number is 15, sorry, in this case, right, our unemployment rate comes out to six and a half percent. So, pretty simple, right? Unemployment is a very simple statistic to calculate. And the reality is, is this is what the Bureau of Labor Statistics does every month. They simply, they have a measure of the um, labor force and through um, their surveys that they do, they can estimate the number of people who are unemployed and they simply crunch out the number, okay? Now, Societies do change, and let's suppose that in this society, the number of retirees goes up, right? We have a society which originally had 150 retirees. Let's suppose 30 more people retire. Well, if 30 more people retire, this brings us up to 180, then my labor force now goes down to 200 people. The decline in the labor force actually can have a big impact on the unemployment rate, as we shall see. In this case, right, instead of this being uh, 230, this is now 200 people. And so 200 people, I mean, a labor force of 200 people out of a population of 500, this reduces my labor force participation rate down to 40%, less, right, 6% less, 
of the whole population is now uh, working in the labor force. Now, this might be bad news, but let's assume that the retirees are people who have worked their whole lives, have earned enough money to sit back and retire, and it might actually be, if you think about the current society, right, the United States, the labor force participation rate is going down, our standard of living is generally doing just fine, in large part because of increased automa automation. The remaining workers in the labor force are actually more productive, and so we're able to maintain our standard of living. However, as we shall see, this has some big impact on the unemployment rate. Previous unemployment rate, 6.5%. Well, now we have a situation where labor force is 200. And in this situation, right, 15 divided by 200 would give us an unemployment rate of 7.5%. The unemployment rate has gone up. Typically, when we first hear about the unemployment rate going up, we'd be like, this is bad news for the economy. But is this economy really any worse off now that the unemployment rate has gone up? Not really, because the number of unemployed people has remained the same. The number of unemployed people has stayed at 15. What's happened is the labor force has shrunk. And as I said earlier, that may not necessarily be a bad thing. Key point to keep in mind is that when talking about the unemployment rate, we have to keep in mind both what the numerator and the denominator are and how they might be changing. To take our society through one more change, let's suppose, for instance, 70 more uh, people enter into this workforce, right? This country accepts in 70 immigrants. And all of these immigrants are working age people. Well, what's going to happen here? Well, my population now changes to 570. None of these people are under 16, none of them are retirees, so this pushes my labor force up to 270 people. Okay, how is that going to change labor force participation? Well, we should probably see a change here because now instead of 200, this will be 270. And my labor force participation in this situation actually jumps up quite an awful lot. My labor force participation goes up to 47%. Almost half the population is now working. That could be quite good, right? And I mean, bringing in immigrants who are of working age, if they go to work, that can actually help an economy grow significantly. And if you look at the record from the United States, immigrants have brought in a, a lot of economic growth. Um, a lot of times people who immigrate also bring in a large amount of human capital that can help drive productivity and uh, economic growth even further. Now, in this situation, uh, five of the 70 immigrants who have come in have not been able to find jobs. So in this case, my number of my unemployed has now gone up to 20. My labor force has now gone up to 270. What this means is that my new unemployment rate is a slight touch lower than what it used to be. 7.4%. It went down a tenth of a percent. Is this a good or a bad thing? Well, I think given the size of the change that's happened in this economy, yeah, the unemployment rate is higher than when we really, when we began this, right? When the problem began, the unemployment rate was 6.5%. Now it's at 7.4%. Uh, but this society has absorbed 65 more workers. Its labor participation rate is actually higher than it was when it began. And, right, um, yeah, it does have a higher unemployment rate, but it's been able to gainfully employ most of those new immigrants. Okay? So again, um, the big lesson, the big takeaway from this problem is that when looking at the unemployment rate, you need to can keep in mind both changes in the labor force and um, changes in uh, the number of unemployed, right? Right, our numerator-denominator problem.